assalamu alaikum uh, i have spoken with few of non muslim friends of mine uh, they all are hindu so they have a strong uh, thing that uh, god has taken avatar on earth and they came in the form of man i have quoted in the words from their own scriptures vedas and all but they are like yes i we believe in these things but no god can do all these things so how can you make them you know more convinced of that uh, god has not taken any avatar on earth well as a question that when you speak to the hindu friends they say that god has got avatar how can he convince the hindu about the concept of avatar that god himself has come down can we agree or how to dawa with them as far as the concept of avatar is concerned the sanskrit word avatar is derived from av and tra av means down and tra means descend to descend down and if you read the oxford dictionary it says that avatar according to hindu mythology means almighty god coming to the earth in human form so for an average common hindu he believes that avatar is almighty god coming on this earth in human bodily form this is what they believe and this is the derived from the verse of bhagavad gita chapter number 4 verse number 7 and 8 which says that whenever there is rise of unrighteousness and decay of righteousness i will manifest myself o bharata and i will come for the protection of the good and the destruction of the evil to establish the good i will come down in every age it says some bhavam yuge yuge it's a very common verse which is always recited even on the television in mahabharat yada yada hi dharmasya glane bhavati bharata that whenever there is rise of unrighteousness and decay of righteousness i will manifest myself i will come for the protection of the good and the destruction of the evil to establish the religion i will come in every age so based on this verse of bhagavad gita chapter number 4 verse number 7 and 8 which is also repeated in the bhagavad purana chapter number 24 shlok number 56 the same thing that whenever there is decay of righteousness and rise of unrighteousness i will manifest myself so based on these two verses they have propounded about almighty god coming in this world in bodily form but if we read the vedas the vedas is the highest authority in all the hindu scriptures if anything god it is the veda the veda should be followed in veda this concept of almighty god coming in bodily form is nowhere to be mentioned the word avatar is not mentioned and many hindu scholars say that the word avatar is derived from av and tra means descending down it is a position of god so it cannot be god himself coming down but it can refer to almighty god sending someone else so many hindu scholars they believe that almighty god has sent other human beings and this concept is mentioned in the vedas vedas if we read with book number 10 hymn number 16 verse number 4 and 5 it speaks about saintly people who god has sent similarly in islam we don't believe that almighty god has to come down and take a bodily form what we believe almighty god chooses a man amongst men and communicates with them on a higher level who we call as messengers or as rasul so this argument almighty god coming in this world in bodily form is no way mentioned in the vedas and if we try and reconciliate veda with bhagavad gita even the bhagavad gita verse that whenever there is rise and decay of righteousness and rise of unrighteousness almighty god sends messengers we have no objection so if we have to reconciliate veda and bhagavad gita and bhagavad purana we have to agree that even that means the same almighty god sends messengers if we analyze most of the major religions besides islam they believe in the philosophy of anthropomorphism almighty god coming down in humanly form some religions believe he came down once some believe he came several times and all these religions to prove their point what they say that almighty god is so holy he is so pure he is so pious he doesn't know the shortcomings of the human beings that's the reason he came down in this world to know what is good or what is bad for the human being you know he is so pure he is so holy he doesn't know how does human being feel when he's hurt when he's troubled when he's in pain so he came down in humanly form to know what is good or what is bad for the human beings so that he could set the rules for the human being on the face of it it sounds like a very good logic but i see and i argue that if suppose i manufacture a vcr 
a video cassette recorder or an audio cassette player? Do I have to be a VCR? Do I have to become an audio cassette player to know what is good or what is bad for the VCR or the audio cassette player? What do I do? Since I'm the inventor, I write an instruction manual that if you want to play the cassette, insert the cassette and press the play button. If you want to fast forward, press the fast forward button. If you want to rewind, press the rewind button. Don't drop it from a height, it will get damaged. Don't immerse it in water, it will get spoiled. I write an instruction manual. I don't have to become a VCR or an audio cassette player to know what is good or what is bad for the VCR or the audio cassette player. Similarly, since Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Almighty God, is the creator of the human beings, he doesn't have to become a human being to know what is good or what is bad for the human being. What does he do? He writes an instruction manual. And the last and final instruction manual for the human beings is the glorious Quran. And he communicates his message by choosing a man amongst men who in Islam we call as messengers. And the mention of messengers is given in Hindu scriptures. I have given the talk, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the Hindu scriptures. It is more than one hour long. And I have given various references of Hindu scriptures where the coming of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is mentioned. Hope that answers the question.